just welcome back. Apology or service. welcome to. No and. Welcome to Dublin, Ireland. My name is Dave Vincent alongside David Fink for the men's round of 16. It's the World Handball Championships at City West Arena. We have Paul Brady Can going up me? against his counterpart, Kevin. Killian Carroll. Dave, you might have heard there was a slight upset yesterday when Killian Carroll took down Aaron Garner in that first round match. And now he's up Irving against Paul Brady. County not, Cabin, necessarily, Paul Brady. not necessarily sure that was an upset, Dave. That was the 16 playing the number 17 seed. Killian Carroll is highly Cork. regarded here in Killian Ireland. Carroll. He's also won some prestigious junior championships in the United States. He's one of the rising stars on the international zero, zero. scene. Today, though, he's up against the current and perhaps greatest player that's ever lived. And the, the great one, Paul Brady gets that side out. Here he is serving. One zero. Wearing all green. Paul Brady is seeking his fourth straight mm. world handball championship. Point. That's a span of 12 years, Dave. It's really unthought of that somebody could dominate Two for zero. 12 straight years. And Paul Brady is certainly proving that on the worldwide scene here as he is just cruising along in this tournament. Amazing shot there from Paul Davis. He lets that ball come off the back wall, left side wall, takes it with his right Three hand, zero. pushes his butt in the left side ball. wall, uses that Irish whip. Left foot. Paul Brady called with a foot fault with his left foot. Second serve. The referee is David Steinberg from Portland, Oregon. Great touch Point. there from Paul, but what that revolving door back wall shot does for you, Dave, taking it with the right hand off the back wall, left side wall, you can hit that shot anywhere, back down the left, down the middle, or down the right with your right hand. If you take that with your left, you have to go back to the middle. This will be a big setup for Killian. Goes right down the middle. Paul is digging that ball up. There's that power Point. from Paul Brady. It's a two wall pass with a lot five zero. of strength behind that. Five, five serves, zero here. It's two games to 21. Breaker played to 11. I'm seeing Paul Brady, Dave, in about 60% speed right now. He knows Come he has in. two matches today. The finals will be on Tuesday. Zero five. Doesn't want to burn himself out here Both. early on Sunday morning. Left foot. Referee very keen on calling those foot faults, Dave. Dave Steinberg yeah, from your old stomping grounds in the Pacific Northwest in the USA. The referee missing a bad bounce there off the door. I don't know if you heard that, Dave. I heard it and I also saw it. It was actually right in front of Dave. Surprised he missed that. Paul over hits that oh. passing shot just a little bit, Dave, and Killian earns his first point with a beautiful revolving door kill. One, five. Both. So we're going to see a lot of these foot faults here. Dave is one of those literal type of referees Second who serve. studies the book and will call exactly what he sees by the letter. Does he study the interpretations, though, of the book? Or just... I'm not sure he's an interpretation studier, but mm. I, I know he's taken the literal one. words of that book and, and he's going to imply it here. Five, one. An old school ref is what you'd say. Fault. It seemed to have affected Paul's service motion a little bit, Dave, there as his stride was significantly shorter than we generally see. Well, I think it can get a little distracting. He's already called four foot faults here. We saw Paul in full flight at the showdown on Thursday night, Dave, and only shot he seemed to struggle with was the three wall shots that died in the back corners. It's a big setup for Paul Brady. Goes down low, hits it hard, jams it into the side wall. Killian gets it back, and now we're still rallying here. 
Hall does not look sharp since that football call. One five. One serve five. Somehow Killian is able to Point. dig that ball up and Paul Brady hits it into the ground. That was an amazing diving get from Killian and Two, Paul five. makes the air a little bit impatient there. And that happens, Dave, when you don't expect one of your best shots to come back, even come though it in. might be a big setup, five, just not prepared two. for it. And that time Killian makes the unforced air going to the ceiling. Five, two. This is the World Handball Championships in Dublin, Four. Ireland, just down the street from Sagard, Ireland. My name is Dave Vincent. We have Paige Bink, currently ranked number sixth on Second the serve. United States Pro Tour. It's actually an international tour. Sitting to my left. Coming in. The danger here for Paul Dave, going at about 60%, is he's allowing Two, Killian five. to develop some confidence. And any player with confidence, Dave, is dangerous. I wouldn't know. I've never been confident playing handball. Mm. So it's about you then. I thought that's who you're talking to. Sorry. Five two. You heard the score there. Five to two. This is the men's round of 16 in the open Go. bracket. Number one seed, Paul Brady. Second serve. He's up the against Killian Carroll. The difference between Paul's serve today, Dave, and what we saw on Thursday night is night and day point well that remains the same that that low kill pass shot that Paul Brady's developed Six, two. that's Very never high changed percentage play Coming in. and that's what's made Killian Carroll Dave the top junior in the world Two, six. Killian has a lot of hip rotation on his right hand. Point. And this is the kind of match, Dave, that Killian has nothing Three, to lose. Six. He's playing the world champion. No one expects him to win. No one really expects him to even be competitive. This could be huge for his career, Dave. Even to just score double figures against the world champion could propel him to that next level. Doesn't look like Killian is phased by the power from Paul Brady much. I mean, of course, unless it's a pass shot, but look at that right there. Killian's getting another point and also some crowd support here. Four, six. Four, six. You heard that score, four to six. Ball. I, I just don't like that call right there. Well, if he's over the line, you, you have to call it, I suppose. Doesn't look like he's over the line, though, from here, Dave. We have about a good as angle as anybody does, and I just don't see a foot going over that. That line is so quick. I think as a referee, Dave, you have to be 100% sure that he's over that line. A lot of times guys Point. toe the line, but are not necessarily over the line. Now, our referee is looking right over the shoulder of the Five, server. Six. Very difficult to call that. Well. That was definitely over the line on that one. That was the announcing curse <laughs> as it was happening. Second serve cursing ourselves. Coming in. And you can see just making that football call from the referee has gotten into the heads just a little bit of the players because uh, Killian kind of let up just a little bit on that serve and Paul Brady just flat rolled it out after having a nice run. So the momentum breaker is actually the referee, Point. but it was a good call. But you see there, Dave, Killian went to a power second serve and he made sure to get it over the line. The ball came 10 feet off the back wall. Now Paul's back in the server's box, scoring after Killian's Don't put together a nice run of five no out of six lines. points. I tried. Nobody wants to do it. Paul Brady's asking for a line judge, and I find it very intriguing that here we are in a major world championship round of 16 and we don't do have it. line judges on the sides here now the referee saying that he asked multiple times to find a line judge a line? 
I need another line. I can Can find one in probably 15 seconds, and I know you could too. I don't know why it's a difficult thing to get an actual judge on the side. I need one other person. Well, I don't know if you've been to any race for eight stops, Dave, but it's taken us 30 to 45 minutes just to find a referee. I need two people. That's one. I need another one. Looking for another line judge here. You see the referee pleading to the crowd to try to find another line judge. who Who is it? Okay. We have replays available as well, Dave, mm. and we can All try right. some of those now out. Now we have two linesmen. If this is second serve, seven five. I mean, it was almost got to fisticuffs out here in the gallery looking for a line Sorry. judge. Side out. And Paul Brady with a double fault. Well, that's what happens when you start having those referees jarring with the crowd, and it just breaks your momentum. Five seven. Five serve seven. Well, Paul looks a little bit out of sorts right now, Dave, starting with the footfall calls and now trying to find linesmen between a first and second serve just doesn't look like <laughs> himself in there right now. And as you know, Dave, Paul is one of these guys that's adamant about staying in his routine both on and off the court. Right now, he's not in his routine. He's not able to go through his normal service motion. The referee seems to be calling his game and it's not going in his way and then the crowd is actually rooting for his opponent which is kind of uncommon for a Paul Brady match well Killian cannot afford to make errors like that Seven Paul five. had a huge setup there with his right hand popped the ball up off the sidewall to Killian's left Killian had a very easy setup Three plays. and missed it now there's another example Dave Killian with a huge back wall setup off the Paul Brady first serve Seven five. miss hits it and hits Paul with the ball and a ball that should have gone straight down the right wall well, you certainly have to execute against Paul Brady. There's no doubt about that. And now a couple point. hand airs here, and I would expect to see a timeout if Killian lost another point. Paul's giving Killian a lot of opportunities to execute, Dave. A lot of times when Paul is at his best, Eight his five. opponents are doing nothing Eight but retrieving. Five. Thus far, Dave, Killian's had a lot of opportunities. He's converted some. Probably not as many as he would like, though. Exception of one back wall shot, Dave. Paul Brady not letting the ball drop as low as he normally does. Therefore, his ball is staying up a little bit more than we're used to seeing from Paul. 9-5. Ball. Paul's lost about a half a step on that service stride, and he's coming up Second a foot serve. short as a result on that first serve. This will be something Dave Paul will have to either work on between matches or just hope that his next referee won't be calling foot faults so he can get back into his normal service routine. Point. You know, Dave, as a player, you go in there and hit hundreds of serves every day preparing for these events, and you may think you're serving great, but may not recognize that you're stepping three or four inches over the line each time. You get into a tournament, and all that practice is for naught because you've got to develop a completely different service motion that's a Five, actually a very ten. good point Dave in practice you never even think Five, about the football ten. call and now we can almost see that line from that camera angle point. there's a point for Killian how does it feel as a player when Six, ten. you're serving and your opponent miss hits a ball and then the crowd claps because your opponent made the front wall and got a side out because of that miss hit how well, does that annoying. <laughs> I don't no know way of saying say. <laughs> Well, that's what seems to be happening. how I react to it. Well, it Paul is. Brady just made a, a hand air off the back wall. Actually, the ball squelched off the side wall and went forward, and he fell on the Ten ground, and then six. the crowd clapped. Uh, does that kind of upset you as a player, the make ball. you focus more, or does it? <laughs> that's a good point. Second serve. Brady just seems to know, Dave, how to put that ball so it hits a side wall on almost every single shot of his. 
Oh, nice shot from Killian, and the crowd likes it too. It was great anticipation from Killian, Dave, and if we can take an instant replay of that last point, Paul Brady set up to shoot the left corner. Yeah. Killian already moving diagonally before Paul oh. Brady even made contact with that shot. He was in the right position, and he flicked the ball behind himself away from Paul. Actually, it was, an, it was a very methodical little flip from Killian. We may he, take a look at that, David, our next time out. In the meantime, Paul Brady just pounds one down the right wall. Well, not only does he pound it, Dave, but he throws a little wrinkle on it that runs away from Killian, a reverse down the right that turns into the side wall, hops just out of Killian's reach. Point. And Paul Dave not serving well at all Point here today, two. but Killian has still missed five Point. first serve returns, all right on his hand. Second serve. And there's another, Dave, that Killian is about 12, 30 feet from the six. front wall, able to take a full swing at that return and just hits 12, the bottom six. of his hand. That's just an amazing shot there from Killian Come Davis. Here. Paul flips that ball into the back wall. Killian looked to take it out of the air, but it hits the front wall with a downspin. Killian six adjusts, plays it off the short hop, and flat kills it in the right corner. The score here is six to 12. Point. And, and the now crowd's Killian liking it. On fire, Dave, as he short hop, flat kills one, then drives a kill down that right side Seven, wall 12. to win consecutive rallies. Short. There's a short ball. Second serve. Impressive young player, Dave, Killian Carroll. Plays very much within himself. Very hard to do, Dave, when you're in, in a situation like this. You want to, the tendency is to try and do a little bit more than you're comfortable doing, but he's not doing that. Time and there's a timeout Paul, called from seconds. Paul Brady. You are watching the World Handball Championships in Ireland. We are broadcasting from City West Arena, a 5,000 seated arena with uh, over or close to 200,000 square feet of exhibition space. My name is Dave Vincent alongside Dave Fink. This show court here, Dave, is truly amazing. We have all of the top well matches uh, filmed here, streamed live over the uh, internet as well as um, uh, throughout uh, homes all across the world here. And we appreciate the fact that you've tuned in to watch this broadcast that we have provided for you today. Paul Brady and Killian Carroll. Carroll is coming in uh, one of the most coveted youngsters that we've heard of in quite some time here. Uh, top player in Ireland and certainly one of the top of his age bracket. Seconds. He's coming into these games and uh, making it here against Paul Brady. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure to face a, a guy that very well could be the greatest player of all time in Paul Brady. Well, as I said, Dave, there certainly may feel like there's a lot of pressure on Killian, but in fact, it's really a no-lose situation for him. He comes in here with the pressure entirely on Paul Brady. Paul Brady's a three-time world champion. He's just an up-and-coming junior player. And here's a replay of that amazing short hop replay. kill from Killian. It's a very seven. difficult shot. We saw Paul Brady take the right angle, but can't do much with that as it rolls out as we're back into play here, looking down at the show courts where Paul Brady point. has just been awarded another point. I believe, Dave, that the pressure generally falls on the favorite. 15, and when seven. you're a huge underdog, the pressure is really off of you. You can just go in there and free wheel and just do the best you can. You're not expected to win anyway. That's a good point. And as a huge favorite, you definitely feel that pressure. It's not as much fun to play when you're a huge favorite. Even winning doesn't feel quite as good because in your mind and in the mind of everyone watching, you know that you were supposed to win. And Carroll is playing Paul Brady quite tough right here. 7-13. So you're saying the pressure is all on Paul and less on on Carroll. In reality, now in Killian's mind, there may be pressure on him, but in fact there isn't. Particularly now, David, he's off to a reasonably good start, trailing just 7-13. to 13. Now he's in. down 15 to nothing. Now the pressure becomes on him. He certainly doesn't want to come out here and be embarrassed, but he hasn't 15, embarrassed himself seven. at all. In fact, 
This actually feels closer than a 13 to seven game. That ball was short by a long mile, not called by the referee. It will be appealed and it will be overturned. Point. And he doesn't look like he's appealing this, Dave. It was way short. You're right, it was way inside seven. the green. And he actually put his hand up. I'm not sure he knows the rule, Dave, that he can appeal after the point's over. A lot of these juniors, Dave, have never played point. with lines people before. Not sure if Killian knows the protocol. He knew the ball seven. was short. Don't think he knew that he could appeal after the point, seven. though. Well, kind of a gray area because I believe when he raised his hands, he's actually officially appealing. And the referee, point. if he saw that hand raise, could ask him if he is appealing. I mean, I, I believe they could appeal that, Dave. I think seven. the line judges also were looking for the appeal. I saw Calistoga Ron on that left wall looking back, wondering why he Come wasn't going to appeal. He actually goes by first round Ron now for his first round losses. <laughs> seven, That's what he 16. told me this morning at breakfast. That's a beautiful pass. Point. You see how Killian hits that about four feet high, Dave. One wall pass and he keeps it off the back wall Eight, by hitting 16. it just under the window there on the front wall. Point. Paul Brady, Dave, in the finals of the USHA four wall nationals about four months ago, made just three hand airs in the Nine, entire 16. final match. Here already today, Dave, he's made 11 hand airs in just three fourths of a game. But a few of those have been with that crazy side glass, which is really hard to see the ball. Well, Paul's been in there, Dave, now his third match. Didn't look to me like he had any trouble in his first match, but. I Coming think in. for a guy like Paul, Dave, who's played in courts like this a number of times, he's probably pretty well adjusted here in this 16, show court. Nine. Short. Paul just does not have the snap on that first serve, Second Dave. Serve. Doesn't look like he's transferring his weight all that well into the serve. Doesn't look like he's flowing Point. on the serve. Well, I think that's because of the foot fault calls that he had earlier. He's up to five now already. In this first nine. game, we're at 17 to nine and five footfalls. Short. But as you know, Dave, for a server, their whole game depends on the serve. The serve gets him in the routine for the rest of the match, for the rest of the rally. And if he feels a little bit off on his serve, you're going to see that reflected in the rallies as well. Unbelievable. Well, Killian takes advantage of a mental mistake there from Paul as Paul tries to Nine shoot the 17. ball from chest high 38 feet leaves it up and Killian has an easy recoil. I'm telling you this young kid Killian is totally impressive coming in defeated one of the up-and-coming Americans Aaron Garner yesterday in a pretty close Nine. match first game was 21 18 thank you there's a double bounce Point. off the back wall Killian calls two bounces 18, on himself. So 18 to nine is the score here. Ball. The ball's just not popping off the front wall, Dave, for Paul Brady on his serve like we've Second seen in the serve. past, particularly like we saw four days ago in the showdown. Point. It doesn't seem like it's a slower ball. It just seems like Paul is doesn't quite have the 19, leverage nine. on the serve right now. Point. Now Paul is just scoring points at will here. One of those returns, Dave, that looks like a bad error, but in fact that ball jumped away from Killian into the sidewall. Killian had to adjust and try to play it off the sidewall and just completely miss hit it. There was the same Point. serve. That time it popped off the back wall. Killian, Killian had a Paul pretty Brady good look at it, but just puts it in the ground. Killian had his moments there, certainly, Dave, in that first game. Paul a little bit off of his game at 13 to Five seven. Minutes. It looked like Killian may work his way into that game, but Paul, as he does, just extended that lead and cruised to a 21-8 first game win. Paul Brady does get that first game and he will be back into the server's box here for game number two, coming up in about four and a half minutes. You're watching the World Handball Championships. We're in Dublin, Ireland at City West Arena, just down the street from Sagart. Now, I know that you, you saw the countryside just a little bit. Yesterday, you went to an area where Braveheart was filmed. What is your impression of the country, the handball players here, the, the welcome that you've received as well for your family from the locals? How many questions was that in one? It was I'm uh, trying to like four or five questions. Okay, let's see if I can start with the first one. Now, the countryside, absolutely spectacular, breathtaking. Uh, 
as soon as I saw it, actually, I've seen Braveheart so many times, I kn it looked like where Braveheart was filmed and the driver told us that, yes, in fact, it was. I wish I knew the name of that area, but it was just incredible. We went to a monastery, uh, saw a couple of old castles, some cemeteries. Uh, you know, there's no way to experience anything like that unless you're here. You know, it's um, as far as the way my family's been treated, it's been wonderful here. The All the Irish handball players, the first thing I always ask you, Dave, is, How's your trip to Ireland going? They really want you to enjoy your stay here in their country. And, you know, they do everything they can to, to make sure that you are enjoying it. There is a dart competition here. Those people may be not quite as hospitable around midnight or later <laughs> after a, a few beverages. But certainly, Dave, this is a wonderful country. First time I've been here, actually. I know you've been here a couple of times before. But certainly looking forward to the rest of the week and coming back as, as soon as I can. You're watching this live stream at race48.com. Please tell your friends and family to tune in to the live coverage throughout the week and weekend. I don't know if we're even in a weekend anymore or if it's a week because the times are seeming to run together, Dave, but we are at race48.com streaming live. But we appreciate the fact that uh, so many have tuned in to watch this, uh, this event here as Paul Brady is trying to make his way for the president and fourth straight time at the World Handball Championships. It's, uh, it's an unbelievable feat as he started off in 2003, one in six, one in 2009, and now he's trying to do it here in 2012. Uh, the World Championships in America, from the American perspective, it's not one of those tournaments that uh, the Americans ever really looked at as being a major event, but with what has happened here at City West Arena and the enthusiasm and energy that Chris Curran and the GAA has uh, sparked into handball, this has become probably one of the best draws that you and I have ever seen at any major handball tournament. Well, I think that perception started to change in 2009. Portland at the time was, I believe, the biggest handball tournament ever staged with nearly 1,000 competitors. You had all the top guys traveling there, including Chapman, Brady, Alan Garner, who made the finals there, Owen Kennedy. It really became a huge event at that time. And I think since 2009, when we've realized that the Irish have really taken over handball, we saw the Irish dominating there, except with the exception of Alan Garner making the final. The Americans started to really point towards this event. And you see all the top Americans here, Dave, they all want to be a part of this championship, do as well as they can, represent our tour and our country. And this, to me, Dave, has become perhaps the biggest event in handball, as evidenced here by 2,300 entries, including all of the top 10 in both the men's and women's open draws. Let's talk about the ball really quick before we get into play. The O'Neill ball has been... Uh, put into play here this weekend. Over 498 matches were scheduled and only two broken balls. Uh, talking to Chris Kern from the GAA, he said, uh, you know, there's gonna be a time when breaking a ball is actually a coveted thing. It'll be something that is uh, looked upon as being a, a, a positive and not necessarily a negative thing. Uh, what, were you, what was your impression or your thoughts about that, uh, that ball when you played with your first round match? This is the best ball I've ever used, I believe. I like a ball that's a little bit softer. I think my hands are a little sensitive, but as far as the consistency of the bounce, the, the texture of the ball, the, the light, uh, the weight of the ball, and the color of the ball, I believe this is the best ball I've ever used. I think you could leave the same ball on the court all day and just continue to use the same ball and it wouldn't make a difference. This ball does not lose any of its life. At least it hasn't any of my matches. And uh, you know, to me, this is uh, perhaps you know, the best ball I've used. I uh, would tend to agree with you. It's a non-pressurized ball made by O'Neill International. We have uh, the second game coming up right around the corner. Paul Brady wins the first one, 21 to eight against Killian Carroll. This is the men's round of 16 as we are giving you the coverage here. And we uh, wanna thank you for that. Killian to the second game. Killian Dave scored eight points in that first game. I think if he had a little bit more self-belief towards the second zero half zero. of that first game, he would have scored 12, 13, maybe 14 points. Now, even Paul Brady at 60% Point. is still going to beat Killian Carroll, but if Killian can One gain zero. a little bit more self-belief, Dave, we could see him into the low teens here perhaps, which would be huge for his confidence. You know Dave is an up-and-coming player. If you play a top player and you score 12 Point. points, you feel like you know, you're right there, ready to make that jump, and Killian Two, zero. could very well be in that boat. 
Well, he has an early two-point lead here, but Paul Brady normally plays better in game number two. Point. Paul Brady now, Dave, with a very tentative start. 3-0. Paul not really dictating play here, Dave, allowing Killian to dictate play with his serve. And that Coming is in. a very difficult shot on this court, Dave, when the ball is high on the front wall, comes down Zero off three. the sidewall, and you try and take it out of the air. The lights come into play, and also Point. the darkness of the I call the ball short. of the glass. It's a very, very difficult shot, and it's frustrating, Dave, because one Killian had Paul disagree. up in the front court. Had he been able to drive that flag throw with his left back down the right, he would have won the point, but just a very difficult shot to play. Paul Brady just Coming swings in. and misses right there, and I, I'm really Three telling zero. you that that side glass Three is zero. so difficult to see a ball. Even, even if it doesn't hit the glass, if it's just sliding down, it, because you have to focus at all times on that ball. We're, we're used to white backdrops, not green, not, uh, not glass. And Point. you let your eyes go away from the ball for just a split second. You have to try to find it again. Sometimes it's not there. You can't Four find zero. it. The score here is four to zero, Dave. Killian's I, already scored more points than anyone has off Paul Brady in this tournament. I can appreciate what you're saying, Dave. But to me, it looks like it's not so much the sight, but Five Paul zero. Brady just not moving his feet well right now, Dave. He looks flat-footed, doesn't have Five the spring zero. to his step right now. I think he came into this match telling himself he would play at about 60%. Now he realizes he needs to push a little bit harder, and it's hard mentally Five to zero. make that transition. This can't give Paul any opportunities, Dave. Well, he's had a couple of opportunities. Normally, I agree with you, Dave, but in this match and in this game specifically, he's Zero had a couple ball. of opportunities that he's squandered. And for Killian, Dave, to know that even if he does leave a ball up and Paul's not putting it away, that just gives him even more confidence, more belief that he can stay in this Point. match. Now that, Dave, is one of those instances where that sidewall glass comes into play. Paul hits a beautiful drive down the right. Killian has his hand on it, but he just loses the ball at the last one second. Five. And that's the reason he makes that hand air. Still a great shot, though, from Paul. Point. And another point for Paul Brady. Killian has to execute every single opportunity, Two, even if five. he makes an air, but he has to get it to the front wall. Don't give Paul any freebies. He's going to earn enough on his own. One of the keys, Dave, to playing Paul Brady, you'd say keys to being competitive or keys to winning. Difficult Point. to say you're going to go in there and win, but keys to being competitive, you have to return his serve. If he's serving well, he's going to hit six to Three ten to or six to eight aces per game, but the serves that you're able to get your hand on, you have to find a way to get them back and make Paul play. You can't let him hit seven aces and then also miss seven other serves that you had Point. your hand on. That means Paul only has to score six or seven points to win a game past his serve. Four or five. Score is four to five, and Paul Brady is rolling right now. Point. Make that five to five. Together at five. <laughs> five, five. Court. You heard the crowd clapping there, Dave. Every Second time two. the score is tied here in Ireland, you'll hear a big round of applause. I know you know the backstory behind that, Dave. I guess you're not going to share it. Roll it. Tinder ball. Well, the referee certainly knows the backstory, and so does the crowd. But the great thing about that call of all together at five, a certain five. number is a good seasoned referee will Mark. only call it after somebody makes a comeback. You don't just do it every single time. You do I it when you feel there's an anticipation mm. for it. And that's when you get the you real feel? crowd of applause. We've seen games that had Both disagree, multiple two togetherness. And could you imagine five, all the five. clapping in those? Sometimes it's, it's unwarranted, but if you see that nice little comeback from Paul Brady and the crowd put their hands together for it. Here's a big setup for Paul. He goes down, does not hit the bottom board though. Beautiful shot there from Point. Pauly. 
comes over top of that ball with the left hand, so the ball runs straight down the right wall. Six five. Now Paul Brady is with the lead. Registered. We're at City West Arena. This is the round of 16 men's open bracket. Paul 20. Brady versus the number 17 seed, Killian Carroll. Paul Brady's the number one seed in the tournament. That seems to be the only hole in Killian's swing, Dave, is that mid-range left sidearm stroke in between his waist and his five. chest. Paul's exploited that on the second serve, the Z serve that comes off the back wall, and we've seen Killian make a number of hand airs. Now it's Killian struggling to return the serve. Nine five. Well, Paul's reversing this ball right here. That one was actually a hook natural that hit the side wall, but his previous three were reverses that slid. Coming in. Killian jamming himself a little bit right now, not extending on his strokes. Five He's losing nine. a lot of power because of it. Gets away with it there as that ball checks up into the side wall. Not a good serve there from Killian. Replay. Paul had a good look at that right corner, Dave. Could have gone down the left. Would have had to rotate his hips a little bit more Five, to drive that ball back down the left. But Both. a lot of times, Dave, going back down the left on that revolving door is a better shot because Second your opponent's two. hanging on the right side anyway. More difficult shot to hit, though. Paul Brady overhit that shot. Point. Terrible miss hit right there from Paul Brady. I don't know if I ever recall seeing him Six do that nine. before. Six serves nine. I don't think Paul needed that big a swing there, Dave. That ball was just hanging right at the short line. Could have taken a little bit of an abbreviated stroke. In the past, Dave, the Irish players were not known for taking the ball out of the air. But you see now, Dave, the new Irish style is looking to take the ball off the wall, as they say in one wall, but Nine they're six. looking to be aggressive and take the ball out of the air and control Nine the center six. of the court. Before you saw most Irish players allowing the ball to drop, perhaps fading back short. and hitting an Irish whip or ball going ball up short. to the roof with a fist. One agree, one disagree, second serve. I think they've since Paul and Tony Healy started to dominate the four wall handball scene in the last eight to 10 years. They've developed that fly kill game and it's trickled down to the juniors and, and the other top players in Ireland. Nice get right there from Killian. Paul Brady pokes that ball, over hits with his left again, this time putting it away down the right. Now, you've seen him over hit with his left hand a little bit much this, this game, this match so far, Dave? Well, he's not shooting the ball a lot with his left. He's opening up his stance and he's just trying to drive the ball back down the right, which is not a bad shot, Point. but he's aiming a little bit too high in the front wall, and a lot of those passes that he's trying to hit down the right are coming off the back wall because they're hit six. too high. Short. Paul Brady has the best offhand two-wall pass I've ever seen, but he hasn't been able to execute it here today. A lot of his Second attempted two-wall two passes with his left are just hitting the middle of the front wall and coming straight off the back wall. Point. And, and there's that hole in Killian's swing there, Dave, with the left hand up the Z serve. Watch this reverse serve. Nope. 12, six. Paul's going to change it up. He's going to a second serve option for his first serve there. You see, Killian just does not have much power on that mid-range left sidearm swing. And another hand Coming air in. from Paul Brady. This is one of those situations, though, Dave, where it doesn't look like six, there's 12. much of a difference between these two players. Obviously, Paul Brady is the number one player in the world. Point. But... The only thing separating these two right now is Paul's belief in Killian's 7, 12. lack of belief that he can actually win this match. You see Paul winning the first game 21-8. Now it's, I believe, 12-7, to seven, but it feels that, closer Paul. than that. No. Point. 8-12. You heard the score there, David. 8-12. Eight, eight, this is about where we were in that first game when Killian was trailing 13-7. Looked like Killian had some Second momentum two. at that point, but made a couple of errors, and Paul Brady elevated his game just enough to close out that first game at 8. We'll see if we'll have a repeat 
Or if Killian's able to actually close the gap here, Dave, and push Paul Brady late into this second game. I think there's a very good possibility that he could do just that. Well, we haven't seen many people get into double digits with Paul Brady over the last seven years. So Killian, the youngster, the teenager, is actually knocking on that door right now. And he could get it right here, Dave. He decided to go up instead of down. The knock on Paul Brady has been, Dave, if you can keep the games close, Paul Brady plays a lot more conservatively. And we're seeing that right Come now. In. We saw it, Dave, in the 2008 USHA Four Wall Nationals against Tony Healy, where he won 11-9 in the tiebreaker, played very conservatively throughout that match. Beat Sean Lenning 11-10 in the tiebreaker in 2007 at the US Both Open. Nine. Also played conservatively there. The only and problem when Luis was Moreno George. beat him 11-10. Paul Brady was extremely tentative, George particularly George. late in that tiebreaker. The problem is not too many people have ever pushed him to get close enough. Well, that's that's true. But if you are able to push Point. him, Dave, Paul's bottom board kill style is not quite there. 13-9. You heard the score, it's 13-9. Paul Brady wins the first one, 21-8. We could very well be watching, Dave, the number one player in the world five years from now. I agree with you. Carol. I don't know if we have to wait five years, though. Well, I could rattle off some names, Dave, that are also in their young to mid-20s that'll be either coming into their primes or already in their Point. primes now. 14-9. I know there's another young Irishman, Dave, that you hold in very high regard, Malcolm Kearns. Also extremely talented. 15-9. George. And another short ball from Paul Brady. That Martin Mulkerns. Second serve. Seems like he would be a great matchup against this young Killen. Carroll. I believe Killian has defeated Martin in the last two Come encounters ahead. they've had. Very good crowd on hand here, Dave, at 10 in the morning. If Paul Brady played at 4 in the morning, I think there'd be a very good crowd on hand. It might even be bigger with the way the crowds are here at the City West. And look at that bottom board play yeah. from Paul Brady. Just smokes that ball dead center, a little bit off to the left, about three inches high. 15-9. I haven't mastered the metric system yet, mm. so you're, you're going to hear inches from me. I think the next time these two play, Dave, you'll see a completely different Paul Brady coming in with his customary mindset to just go out there and destroy. I think this morning, Dave, he came in here. And that's an amazing serve from Paul, but thank you. Looks like he came in here, Dave, just to try and cruise through this match. And he's found out that this youngster is a more than he expected. Can't wait to talk to Paul after the match to see what his thoughts are about this. Young kid, Point. Carol. I can't wait to see you try to talk to Paul after this match. <laughs> Touche. I think the most that 18, nine. you have ever spoke to Paul Brady is when he was beating you the other night in the showdown match and he said, please hand me the ball. And you're like, oh, he does talk. Point. I don't think he said please though. This is game number two of the World Handball Championships men's round of 16. Paul Brady versus 19, nine. Killian Carroll. This Scores 19 to nine. A replay of the first Point. game, Dave, where Killian closed the gap in the middle of the game and then Paul extended a lead 29. late in the game and now he'll cruise to what looks like to be about an eight and Point. nine victory. And if there's anything, Paul Brady, 29, 29. if there's anything such as a moral victory, Dave, it was it was certainly a moral victory for Killian Carroll. Paul has to feel pretty good that he got a pretty tough match under his belt. He'll be playing again today, which is unusual in World Championship formats, Dave. Generally, you just play one match per day, but all the guys that win this morning in the round of 16 will be playing again tonight. So Paul Brady will be facing tonight the winner of Luis Cordova and John Iglesias. That'll be coming up here shortly. In fact, that one is scheduled to be on the show court right now. Mm. John Iglesias and... Uh, Luis Cordova from Juarez, Mexico. John Iglesias 
uh, from Puerto Rico, but uh, living in New York and uh, Costa Rica, excuse me, and then uh, uh, implanted into New York and all places in between. He went to LFC College. This is going to be a good matchup because uh, John Iglesias didn't get a great seed, but he did get a good draw, and Luis Cordova is probably positioned where he should be. What are your thoughts on that match as we look forward really quickly, and then we'll take a timeout? Well, I certainly agree that he got a good position in the draw, John Iglesias. I had an opportunity to spar with John last week. He came to Pittsburgh for a couple of matches. He's playing really well. He's playing the best handball I've ever seen him play. This, Dave, is a match I've been looking forward to between Luis Cordova and John Iglesias for some time. Luis worked his way up the ranks last year, achieving the number seven ranking, which he currently holds. John Iglesias only traveled to one tournament last year, didn't make it through qualifying, but John Iglesias is one of those guys, Dave, that's a spoiler. He's a big match player. He's proven that. He's nearly taken down Dave Chapman. He's had very close matches with Sean Lenning, Luis Moreno, and it's only a matter of time, Dave, before John Iglesias does have that big breakthrough win and we see him crack into that top eight. Very similar to a Tyree Bastidas that we saw last night take down Tony Healy, both guys from New York, both guys with a lot of talent, sort of an unorthodox style, and it really throws guys off. They're taking balls on short hops, they're hitting balls hard with both hands, going for kills when you wouldn't necessarily expect it. And this match, Dave, will be extremely interesting, very difficult to predict. We've seen Luis Cordova blow guys out that you thought might beat him. We've seen him lose badly to other guys that you would have expected him to beat. And we'll just have to wait and see here. I'm very excited about it. Last year on the Race for Eight uh, Pro Series with the World Players of Handball, Luis Cordova defeated Tommy Little, journeyman top eight player. He also took Nadia Alvarado to a tiebreaker, defeated Andy Nett at one point, who's also in the uh, top eight, and, uh, and played pretty good ball throughout that season. So we are certainly going to catch a really good one. If you want to sit around and, and wait for a great match, this one coming up next, even if you don't know the two players, will probably go tiebreaker, and it could be a, a high-scoring tiebreaker. If not, if it is too straight, it's going to be high-scoring two straight games. So get ready for that. That's streaming live here at race48.com. This is the World Handball Championships. My name is Dave Vincent alongside Dave Fink and our operators back in the van as well as Linda Manning. We'll be back in just a bit for match number two of the round of 16 between John Iglesias and Luis Cordova. You stick with us. Thanks, Mark. 